right, so I'm going to read you this article here. Some of y'all might have seen it, some of y'all might not have. It's a, it's a new article. Um, and it was going along with what I was telling you uh, in the last video. Um, basically, this is just giving you the, the numbers that we've already went through. Um, so I'll get down here to uh, what went wrong. So what went wrong? I have some theories. One, from the get-go, even Star Wars fans said that Solo is a movie we don't need. We said that forever. Uh, that the origin, the origin of Han Solo doesn't need further exploration, and therefore the announcement of the movie was met with a lukewarm reception. Therefore, people just didn't have as much interest to see the movie in theaters and stayed at home. Then we had The Last Jedi, not to open discussions about it once more, but even the most die-hard Last Jedi fans will hopefully agree that the movie is somewhat divisive and at least a non-trivial percentage of fans was quite non-trivial. That's, that's it. See, see, that's just non-trivial. In other words, there's a bunch of fans like us. Uh of fans quite disappointed and maybe even angry. You read about a boycott movement in so many places. Entire YouTube channels are dedicated to this. We are. Uh, I mean, we're, we're, yeah, we are. And while it is completely unknown how big this movement is, we know how big it is. It's about three quarters of their fan base. Or, if it has made a dent, it does exist. And maybe the disappointment Star Wars fans who hated The Last Jedi chose Solo as their vehicle to make a statement and stayed at home. Number three, Star Wars fatigue. I personally don't believe in Star Wars fatigue per se, but it can be argued that the same time window between the release of The Last Jedi and Solo was simply too short. Now we all know it's just a crock of crap. We'd go watch these things every damn week if, we, if, if they made a good movie. Maybe a December release would have been a wiser choice. No, it really wouldn't have. It wouldn't have done anything. Uh, Star Wars is not the MCU, uh, so it can't release three or four movies in a year in quick succession. Star Wars needs to be an event, needs to be special, and maybe Solo didn't feel that special need. Ah, crap. That's, that's not it. Uh, general audiences are confused about the shifting timelines for the Star Wars movies. Han Solo died in The Force Awakens. Wait. He lives again? Now we get to see a movie that is set, what, 40 years before The Force Awakens? The MCU movies are all set in the same timeline time with various movies building upon each other and leading to big events. Lucasfilm has a different strategy. They have trilogy movies and then more or less completely unrelated standalone movies set in different time periods even. Maybe this is too confusing for some. I remember people asking why and how Rogue One is not the sequel to The Force Awakens. Perhaps general audiences are not that much invested in completely unrelated movies that don't really connect. Now, here's the one that really hit me. Lucasfilm employees or people who work for Lucasfilm in some capacity made some less than flattering remarks about some Star Wars fans after The Last Jedi. Maybe this didn't go down so well with a lot of fans, and they decided to send a message to Lucasfilm. Damn right we did. Now these are just all my thoughts, trying to make sense of Solo's low box office because word of mouth is mostly okay. Most people who actually saw the movie seem to enjoy it, according to many. Yet, it if you go look on Rotten Tomatoes, that's not the case. I've seen the movie. It's it's boring as hell. Uh, the most fun Disney Star Wars movie yet. No. That's, no. Not even close. But, as things are now, it might not even break even. Oh, it's not going to break even. They're going to take a bath on this one. Um, Disney's chief of distribution, David Hollis, says this. We have a lot of work to do trying to understand this. It's pretty easy. David, give me a call. Watch a, watch a damn video. Read the comments down below on, on a video. Uh, we're all over it and we'll spend a lot of time digging into why things happened the way they did in various markets. Various markets. 
We have a year and a half before Episode Nine comes out. It sounds as if Disney has no real clue yet why Solo failed at the box office, whereas most fans will probably come up with one or two good reasons right away. So what do you think? What do you think the reason was for Solo's bad box office? And do you think Lucasfilm might change their strategy, rethink their overall plans for the franchise, or do you think things will go on like before and only if something similar happens in Episode 9 there would be massive changes at Lucasfilm? Will we still get a Boba Fett movie? An Obi-Wan movie? So many things hinge on the success of the movies. Hasbro, the Disney streaming channel, and even the new Star Wars theme parks. My opinion, this is in the this is an article. My opinion, Lucasfilm should stop dismissing fan criticism, should stop painting the fans who criticize The Last Jedi and Disney Star Wars in general in a wrong light. Neither are the fans, the very vast majority, afraid of women, J.J. Abrams, nor did dames ruin a caveman like deliberating obsession Pablo Hidalgo said that. Nor do average out-of-shape white guys shake in horror because Han gave the Falcon to a girl. Insulting fans never helps. Fans might not like that. Fans might choose not to buy a ticket to your movie. Now, there you go. I mean, finally, we've got another website that's given us exactly, well, the truth. It's Disney has no freaking clue. I, all right, well, here you go. Anybody from Disney, call me, email me, reviews for you, eighteen at gmail dot com. I'll tell you exactly what's wrong with your movies, and I'll tell you exactly what's wrong with your movies from my point of view and from everybody who's commented's point of view, which seems to be just like mine. Um. You know, you just don't, you don't sit there and take shots at the fans, and then you don't make crappy movies, and origin movies never, never do well, and you don't recast iconic characters, uh, and these are Star Wars films, they're supposed to have Jedis and Siths and lightsaber battles, and it's a big space opera, what you're giving us is the Hillary Trump election, for a year and a half, all over again, but you're throwing a little pew pew in there every now and then from, you know, a TIE fighter going by. We don't want that. We're going to the movies to get away from that. That's, we go to the movies to get away. We go to see Star Wars because we're fans. Anyway, it's Craig, reviews for you, just thought you might might be interested in this article. Um, I will have my episode 9 stuff uploaded here shortly. Uh, so the episode 9 stuff will be out tonight. Um, I'm going to go ahead and upload this one real quick. And then uh, I'll upload the other one. And we'll start a discussion on the changes for episode 9. Alright, it's Craig. Reviews for you. And I am out of here. You don't know the power of the dark side.